Hi everyone, happy Friday and welcome back to Nalo's Thrift Talk. I'm Lola. And I'm Nay. And if you are new to this channel, this is a weekly live YouTube show all about thrifting and reselling and different ways that we can use secondhand items to improve our lives. And we are both resellers on platforms like eBay and Poshmark and Depop. And today we are going to do our try to for an episode that we've been talking about for a while. It's all about different um, posh parties um, and the brands that are promoted by Poshmark during posh parties. And so these are the brands that might not be on your radar yet, but are good to know about and are some that we weren't as familiar with. So we kind of um, pushed our own comfort zone a little bit in learning about new brands and um, we're really excited to uh, get to talk about them. Anything you want to add, Nay? No, that sounds good. Um, so these brands are like, it's, it's good to watch out for these lists when to pay attention because not only it's a good to participate in the Poshmark parties and we'll talk a little bit about what they are, but also if you follow these brands, then you're going to have some good bolos on your radar and you're going to be pay, paying attention to what is trending. So totally. It's a great, great recap. Yes. Um, but before we dive into that, we have a couple of our weekly segments to do. And the first one is, what thrifted items are we wearing? Do you want to go first, Nay? Sure. So I have, um, I'm trying to switch the. Sorry, I was oh. doing it. Okay. I, I won't touch it. <laughs> okay. So I have this, I believe it's crocheted, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was from, this was just a find from the bins and I, whenever I find hats or scarves and all, I always grab them from the bin. So it is freezing here in New Jersey. Like, um, I think the wind chill is probably below zero. It feels like it at least. So it is freezing. We're supposed to have a lot of snow on Monday. So I am bundled up. And this, this sweater is just, it's just like a Macy's brand. I think it's like international concepts or something. It's nothing too exciting, but I got it. I think I paid like $4.99 for it and it's got the cowl neck and it's just, it's just acrylic, but it's super cozy and warm. And that's just the kind of day that it is here. Totally. So. Yeah. We're, we're both wearing our super cozy sweaters. Mine is actually one that I knit myself. And the story behind this sweater was, the week of the election, I was super anxious and I like, couldn't sleep. And I was up at all hours, just like trying to watch the news. And so I tried to challenge myself to finish a sweater like, before the election was finally called to see if I could just like put all my energy into it and like keep my mind off things. So um, I, I almost succeeded. I had like, um, I actually it was knit from the top down, but I had like just a few rows left at the end. Um, but the reason I'm counting this as thrifted is because I did buy the yarn for it on eBay and I got an incredible deal because the seller did not, um, let's see if I'm asleep. the seller did not know what it was. And so they had misrepresented it. Um, it's not something that I would necessarily have been like, oh, that's an INAD because, you know, it was sort of generally described. I think they, they called it like Irish yarn. I'm pretty sure it's actually an American brand of yarn. And I figured out the color. And from there, I was able to figure out the yardage and was able to, you know, make sure I had enough for the sweater. So if you have yarn and you're not sure what it is, I would definitely go back to, thanks guys. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brian, I could not do that either. And I, I have attempted okay, to, I will teach I'm you. still, <laughs> still not still on very remedial level and I keep ripping out and ripping out and yeah so I aspire to I was there once too it's just a, it's just a matter of like not giving up and and just eventually becomes muscle memory and it's that it clicks all at once and um but if you have yarn that you're not sure about definitely go back and watch our episode on yarn um or you know feel free to ask us email us comment because if you have the right information on your listing it is going to go for a lot more money and yeah. you won't have someone like me who spends a lot of time going through the yarn listings on ebay and finding the undervalued ones that mm -hmm. are misidentified and getting them free steals so that is very <laughs> I, true yeah. i paid under 30 dollars for all of the yarn for this sweater and I had some left over. So I'll probably be listing that and make a chunk of Pretty my amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. 
And our next segment is our thrifted home decor items of the week. So Lola, what do you have this week? So I have, and if you were tuned into our, um, our first go at this episode, we had some technical difficulties. So we're just, uh, we're just my to <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, it was, um, I feel like our back and forth is so important to the show that like this whole. Yeah. And I could, I was lagging behind so much. I couldn't hear what you were saying. And yeah. it was like, it was, uh, so I've moved my location. So it might get a little noisy here. Cause I, I had to move downstairs closer to my router. I was having some odd issues upstairs again. I don't know what's going on with, with, uh, my internet lately, but I'm sure it doesn't help still that so many students are doing school online and just, yeah. So um, just to warn you guys, it could get a little loud because I don't have a door to shut right now. I'm in my dining room, so. Okay, so um, maybe was it like two years ago at this point? It was definitely well over a year ago because um, it was when I was still in Philly. We went to our local Goodwill outlet mm -hmm. and I found these huge boxes full of vintage wallpaper. Right. And they were, so our, our outlet, um, is I think kind of unusual and that it has a ton of hard goods. It does have some clothing, but it's not just bins and bins of clothing. There are a ton of hard goods. But every now and then there's still something that like really kind of jumps out at you. And the box of wallpaper was one of those because it was just, it was, it was weird how it was still mostly together. And then I found like another box of also like all these different partial rolls. I think some of them are still brand new, but a lot of remnants. So this one really pretty so pretty so, yeah. Vintage. so yeah and i did start researching them to try and figure out the age and um and like a little bit more information some of them didn't do have information on the back like this they're definitely older because they don't have the self-adhesive um so i think they date to before the that the point where that became more typical um, this one's a little bit less exciting. It's still very, very pretty. And I um, have been wanting to get back into doing more like collage art. Um, so I'm finally going to sit down and decide this one. It's like sort of a American like patriotic kind oh, of. Oh yeah, that's, that's, kind of. that's very 70s. I yeah, think. it's definitely very 70s. And then it has um just the most amazing texture i don't know if you can oh, wow. see, like a there's a lot texture. i don't know if it is it 70s or older it might be a little older i think that i think there's a lot of i'd say this one looks like 70s just the there was a big like bicentennial theme back then oh um, yeah that's a good point this could be like a 70s. and i'm gonna age myself right now and you'll know that i'm an old lady because i was actually born in the year of the bicentennial so no end. way! I, I, because we're ten years apart, and I was born ten years later. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so I was the year my mom graduated from high school, and she was always really proud of it because I guess they made a big deal about like being the bicentennial high school class, and That's she was funny. president of her class, so like she got to do it. Yeah, that was my birth year. So, yeah. um, I think some of them were more six. Some of these were from the sixties. They're definitely not from the seventies, and then a few that might have been newer. So I have been putting this off for a long time because it's just one of those things where I have a hard time listing it because I kind of want to do something with it. Mm -hmm. But there's so much of it, I think I could save some of it for myself and then list some of it either as um, usable wallpaper. I need to figure out how to calculate what's the, what the dimensions are so people know if they can use it or not. And, um, and some of it might just be like, I might cut it up into sh smaller sheets and sell it as like packs of collage supplies for other artists, um, which I've seen some people do well with on Etsy. So I have a bunch of ideas. I need to research a little bit like what the best way for me to make my money is based on time intensity intensity of the idea or um, just the cost. Like if some of these are super valuable, I definitely don't want to be cutting them up. So I need to figure that out, but I don't think yeah, I well, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but so if anyone yeah, wants to like um, knows anything about so vintage wallpaper. Yeah, because I don't know a lot. Of, I did. I have found some on my travels, and I love finding stuff like that in the bins. That's the best yeah. when it's just like because it's not expensive and 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like a low cost risk. Like even though it's exactly. a little bit inside, I don't think I paid more than a few dollars for all of it. And worse comes to worse. And I end up redonating it or giving it away mm -hmm. on like a buy nothing group or something to a school who can use it for crafts. Like, you know, yep, I'm yep. Sure somewhere someone will get some use out of it. And you're and so crafty. You can do some things. So. It's a, it is a lot of wallpaper though. I think I could probably be set for life if I wanted to just <laughs> collage for the rest of my life with this stuff. So to set. So my home decor item is this mug, which has sentimental value. So I talked about in a previous episode, I talked about like my origins of thrifting. And when I was a little girl, we used to go, my, my parents and I, my parents would bundle me up and we would go like on a Saturday or Sunday morning to this huge flea market. And I mean, I'm talking like six o'clock in the morning and we'd go, the first thing we do, they had a little, a little breakfast stand. So we would eat breakfast. And then I remember like the eighties, this was like in the eighties, like the, the leg warmers and the boots and everything. And it was so cold and it was so early, but those were some of my favorite memories. So this is, a, this was her, this is my first mug that I really remember ever drinking out of and, and having like my hot chocolate and all as a little girl. And it was purchased at that flea market probably for like a quarter or something. So this was, this was a thrift, an early thrifted find of mine. And it is an Odagiri mug. So, oh. yeah. So this is one of, you know, one of my, my treasured um, mugs. It's my first mug and it has that sentimental value because it reminds me of and when I used so to go to the flea so market. It is adorable too. And it's, and it's also got a little, a little um, throw, throw um, a little pride kind of vibe to it too. Cause it's got the, the right. It's a, yeah, it's a it's an adorable mug, and um, that's like kind of one of my treasured finds from my early thrifting days. I love and, that. And um, I, I just wanted. I was just gonna say, I love that you can buy something secondhand and still hold on to it forever. Like your your own personal heirlooms can mm -hmm. be things that weren't new when they came to you to begin with. Absolutely. I, yeah, like, and like I said. Yeah, that mug was purchased back in the 80s at a flea market, like probably for like a quarter or so. So maybe less, who knows? But it was it was definitely not like, you know, it was just one of those little. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, my when I was a little girl, see, I've loved coffee forever. But when I was a little girl, I started drinking. I would ask for coffee milk. So my parents would like give me like warm milk with like a dot of coffee in it, you know, and I just used to love. So I remember drinking my coffee milk and, and that. that's what I would call it. <laughs> Okay, so our I did want to um, just I just wanted to um, speak a little bit about this. So everybody knows this is me and my daddy. Um, everybody knows I, I have mentioned it that my dad is in the hospital right now. He's in ICU in very critical condition. He's on a ventilator. He is in a coma, and um, he has he got COVID in the hospital. Uh, he went in for an unrelated issue, some edema in his legs due to his congestive heart failure and caught it in the hospital. So um, it's been a horrible almost two months now. He's been in since December 9th. And um, I think we're going to be moving him to another hospital soon, but he is still fighting. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of all of our friends and viewers and everyone who has, um, you know, given their thoughts, prayers, um, good vibes and, and all for, for my dad. And I just wanted to give a little shout out to my dad because um, I love him so much. And I, I, my mom and I are just hoping and praying that he will uh, come through this. It's not looking good, but um, you know, he's a, he's a strong guy and, and he's a fighter. So um, love you, dad. And um just a little tribute to my dad. So I'm hoping that, hoping that he pulls through. And also to everyone, please, please, please wear your mask, social distance, um, do all of, do your part to mitigate the spread because you don't want to go through what my family is going through. You don't want this. And you don't want to be in my dad's shoes either because it can affect everyone differently. My dad's a strong guy. He is 82, but, um, he is a strong, strong man. He's he's survived all of this time, and he would have been home if he didn't get COVID. Um, but it's still just seeing what it's done to his brain and his body and his lungs and all. It is a horrible virus. So I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I am trying to just 
little public service message to please be be careful and uh, stay safe out there. So, um, and next week we will be talking about duds. So, oh, wrong date there. This is, <laughs> I never changed the date. So ignore that. That will be next Friday, not today, next Friday, or not last week, I guess now. Um, but that'll be next Friday, whatever next Friday's date is. Um, and it'll be, I February, think, right? Yeah, it'll be February. Yeah, uh, February something. February 5th, the something. first Monday. First Friday in February. Yeah. So, um, so next, yeah, next Friday, ignore the date there, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, as long as, you know, again, the situation with my dad is just ever changing and, um, you know, so things can change at, at, at last minute's notice. I did candle last week because he was, it was looking bad last week and then he kind of rallied a little bit again. So, you know, just kind of depending on the situation, we will be um, doing that next week. So we'll be talking about our duds and we'll be kind of doing a little critique back and forth mm -hmm. of, you know, some, some constructive criticism on how maybe we can move some of our current duds. Yeah. So, and if you have a dud that you want us to look at, you could also, um, send us a link to your item or a screenshot. And, um, I mean, we can include a couple viewer duds as well. So that'll be really fun. Yes. And uh, as always, I am a graphic designer. I am taking um, orders for, and I will be changing my package prices probably very soon because um, I was running the, these through the end of the year. They're still kind of existing now, but I will be raising my prices soon. So, so if you want to So <laughs> what's that? They're definitely too cheap. It's a steal. Yeah, I know it is a steal. So if you want to get in on these prices, um, you know, I would message me soon. I, I, I do have a little bit of a backlog and I've been a little little taking, I've had to take some time off lately because I've been spending time with my mom a lot and, you know, with the situation with my dad, but I am, I am actively doing graphic design work and um, I do packages for online sellers. So if you want a banner for your eBay store, I will give you a, and a, you know, I do logos, um, business cards, package inserts, all that stuff. Um, and if you want one package, I will give you a discount on a second one. Let's say you have an eBay store and an Etsy store. So just let me know. And um, okay, we're going to be talking about our main topic now, which is our slash party brands. No. So um, I wanted to start off with, I had, it's, I have, I have an Apple watch and I get notifications on it. And every time there's a posh party now, I've set, I have my notifications on Poshmark. Oh, so I get the, so I will re re remember like, Oh, there's a party going on now and I'll go to my phone and I'll, you know, start sharing my items to the party. So, um, set your notifications. Even if you don't have a watch, you can do it on your phone. Um, you know, just, you can even do it on your, on your laptop or whatever. So it will notify you when there are posh parties. And did you want to go over a little bit about what the parties are, Lola? And yeah, did you want to do that part or I can jump sure. in? Sure. So, um, so let me just get back to my, yeah. So they're divided by topic and brand. So, um, basically there's three parties of the day. So the afternoon, the, there's the afternoon party it's at, um, there's a 12 PM Pacific which is uh, the brands. And then there's a 3 p.m. Pacific one, which is like a category like petites or men's or kids. Um, so, and then at 7 p.m. Pacific time again, is any, pretty much anything goes. So you can share anything in your closet. So the 12 p.m. Pacific or 3 p.m. Eastern one is the one where they have specific brands that you can share. And there are lists of brands and I'll show you that in a minute. So there, um, so each party has a different genre and like different lab brands. Um, examples are like luxury, boho, activewear, outdoor adventure, preppy. So if you go to the app or the website, you can view all the recent parties and see the list of, of allowed brands. And this is a good way to become familiar with new brands, figure out what's trending, and then the brands that you should be stocking your closet with. And you will gain more attention to your closet and get more, you know, more buyers and, and views on your items if you have these trending brands in your closet. So, um, and then the list of brands is always changing and it does seem to be expanding to many more allowed brands, especially as of recently, they've added a lot more brands. So mm -hmm. let me just show you guys some of what I'm talking about here. Whoop. Um, so if you go to the, um, 
So this is the posh party. So if you go up here, this is on the website and you look at the tab up here, it says parties. And if you click on that, it will show you all the upcoming parties. Um, it'll show you the past parties and and it, you'll get you'll be able to get an idea of what kind of parties they have. You'll be able to see what's coming up so that you can and you can RSVP or just jump into them when they're happening. So you can see what's happening. And there's the, again, the three times, the 3 p.m. that this is in Eastern time because I'm on the East Coast, 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. And um, so you'll see best in sweaters and tops is 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 happening first, and then the, the boutiques, um, and then together we we posh. But usually they will have a brand featured, like um, plus plus size. Um, you'll see luxury. So here's an example of one. The luxury one here is. Um, You'll see the 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 brands will be listed like on the some of the brands the high the featured brands will be listed on the title of the party. But then if you click here, if you can see it. It says view party details, and you can get this in the app too. If you click view party details, it will give you a list of all of the allowed brands, and this is what you need to pay attention to. So I would go to the parties, search the past parties, search the upcoming parties and see what brands are listed. Now, like I said, they have expanded their brand list greatly. So now you'll see this is a long list. Yeah. A long list. And it used to be that, you know, there may be a dozen, maybe 20, 25 brands or so. But now, like, they really seem to be, be expanding, which is a good thing, too, because it's um, opening it up for more brands. But um, you know, these are all like high end, what's considered high end and luxury, like, you know, the ones that you would think of, like Badgley Mishka, Balenciaga, Armani, Dolce & Gabbana, Dior, you know, but then there's some, some ones that you might not have heard of, like there's Jonathan uh, Simkai, um, what else is there, um, Constantino, um, Lauren, um, Manjuing among among mono monogian I think it is, um, but but there's so there's some brands there too that you might not be aware of, but those are brands to look for because th these are the brands that are trending on Poshmark. They're selling, and if you're out in the thrift stores or you know shopping online now with COVID and everything, um, these are brands that you should always be keeping your eye out for because. Um, especially like on some of these high end ones, some of these can bring a lot of money, you know, on the, but there's also, um, you know, there's a lot of different parties that are, you know, that are, um, for example, um, here's one active wear. So, and you'll, and we had a whole less, a uh, whole episode lesson. Well, I guess it wasn't kind of a, lesson, <laughs> yeah, but a whole a good, if, so if you're not familiar with a lot of these brands, on, on um, activewear and athletic. Yeah, you can um, look at our um, our episode and, you know, get, get some more of those brands. But you'll see like these are all of the showcase, the showcase items that were in the party. And then if you if you go again, view party details, you will see a full list. So I would highly recommend going into these parties and um, you know, getting, looking at the list of the brands and, um, you know, making yourself familiar with, with what's, what's happening. And like I said, there are so many different, uh, parties, you know, like there's outdoor adventure, there's, and that's like brands like Patagonia and Columbia and all the ones that you would think of, but then there's also other brands that you might not think of. So, um, definitely, definitely, um, you know, make yourself familiar with the parties and, and look at look at the brand list. So we're gonna share some that might be a little bit off of the grid, um, or you know maybe you have or haven't heard of them. But these are some of the brands that we have seen trending in the posh mm -hmm. parties. Um, we're gonna give you ten, but there again, there's so many more that you can look for. And these are the ones that are that are real that are trending and selling well. So here is uh, the first one. L Lola, do you want to take that? this? Is a brand that. Um I become a fan of over the past few months um, and it's called Telfar. It's a higher end brand, um, but it's actually s fairly affordable for the kind of like high design that they, that they do. Um, 
it is considered a streetwear brand um, by Poshmark. And so it's part of the streetwear and tr uh, the streetwear party and the trending party. So there's two different parties that it is included in. Um, the name Telfar comes from the designer's name. His name is Telfar Clements, and he is a Liberian American um, designer. And the bags, these uh, sort of tote bags or shopping bags are the sort of signature item for the brand. They do have other items, mostly accessories, like uh, the, I know their beanies are big, but uh, the, the this bag is like the it bag of 2020 and Telfar mm -hmm. is considered a uh, success story of the pandemic, according to the New York Times. So the the sort of catch with these bags is that they are available in very small quantities and you kind of have to sign up for the Telfar email list to find out when a new batch of them is being dropped on the website. If you can get one, they are you know, not astronomically expensive for the it bag that's really trending right now. The smallest size I think starts at like $150. So, you know, if you're if you're someone who, uh, mm. who carries handbags, you're probably familiar with that um, they can be extremely expensive. So yeah, that, that link for the Converse is not working right now, oh, but no. so that's yeah. There is a collab with Converse yeah. too. And so. then there's one that's coming up soon um, with UGG in 2021. Uh -huh. That is that, oh, there he is. That's mm -hmm. Telfar Clemens right there. Yeah, so this is a New York Times piece um, all about sort of the brand and um, his point of view and how it really became big. Um, how it's kind of exploded over the past. Uh, it's one of those, yeah. it's a paywall thing, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you got to see his picture, so. <laughs> well, we'll put the link in the. In the yeah, show. we'll put that link there, and. Um, um, there is also a Vogue article. It might not be paywalled if you could. And then if you brought that oh, one. Too. Yeah, I can bring that up. Yeah. Um, um, so definitely, I'm going to keep an eye out for the UGG collaboration. I think that's going to be really popular. But if you, I mean, these are bags that probably aren't going to be in thrift stores just because they're a newer item in general but that won't be true for forever and it's a big enough name right now that i think in two or three years when some of these start to trickle into thrift stores or you might find them in consignment shops um in places like that where you know it's maybe a little bit more selective what they're carrying yeah you and you never know what you're gonna find somebody might donate one you know you mm -hmm. never know yeah um but also um they are vegan right they are yes, they are vegan leather which is a cool selling point for a lot of people. So if you ever come across one, do put that in the keywords. I like to buy, I've been, I was vegan for a long time and I still look for, I vegan is always a plus for me. So, and it is for a lot of people. So yeah, so definitely look for those. And uh, okay, next is. Faithful the brand. Faithful the brand. Which here is. is very boho, very um, kind of laid back, casual, like flowy dress okay. brand. It is part of Poshmark's boho party. So some of the other brands. Yeah, it's kind of more. You might be familiar with um, like Anthropology, Free People, Show Me Your Moo Moo, Lucky. And this is a brand, it's based in Indonesia. So they draw on a lot of um, the textiles from Indonesia and also like vintage textiles that they say they find in flea markets, places like that. So it's kind of cool to think that maybe some of the vintage clothes we sell then, you know, kind of goes back into the ecosystem of style and is reimagined into some of these like floral prints. And um, these are really like of the moment, very kind of work from home style dresses. So I think they're also a brand that is going to be more in demand right now as people are, you know, wanting sort of comfortable, more loungy clothes that still look nice for, you know, mm -hmm. being on Zoom. And they definitely seem to hold their value. So I was just browsing and, and looking at um, the retail prices. So some of these pieces will sell on sites like net Porter or, or because it's a net-a-porte and revolve for um, 
like $50, $60 on sales, so not full price, but that's, you know, retail. They're still available at those prices. And the comps on Poshmark are, you know, about so 50 for a dress. So I was seeing like $20 for a top and then 40 to 80 for a dress. Yeah. So this, yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. This is one brand where I'm very cautious about buying dresses nowadays because they tend to be far more expensive than they used to be at, you know, re like Goodwill re retail, not, you know, um, outlet stores. Mm -hmm. I would, if I found a faithful to brand dress, I would still pay up. For, I would pay twelve dollars for it or whatever it is. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, definitely because it's going to hold. It's, it's and it's a great brand to have again to have that name in your closet because mm -hmm. it will bring more traffic to your closet. So mm -hmm. and it is uh, that that would be in the boho party and it is very yeah. boho. You know that's mm -hmm. a good description. Um, prairie, uh, flowy. Yeah. You know all that stuff. Yeah. So some of that like seventies. Yeah. So our time. next. Definitely. It definitely has a, a kind of um, vintage vibe to it. Mm -hmm. And our next brand is, and I will bring Thank it up in a second. Vintage Vibes. This is a sportswear, or I'd say like, um, like sports apparel company. Yeah. yeah. They are Philly based, which is one of the reasons I wanted to include them. Because yes, also, and I do have a Philly's uh, shirt that's um, Mitchell and Ness. Yes, and when we were thrifting, you always were finding yeah. um, Mitchell and Ness items for your spouse, Chris. Yeah, I pretty much always would pick them up, even if they're not. Not all of them have great resale value, uh, yeah. but they're just really well made, and they're you know they're nice to have if you're a sports fan. So. Yeah, they're pretty consistent. And I think some of these things are a little underpriced. I mean, like I would not, I would have charged more for like this, the Seahawks jacket, probably if I can find it again. Yeah, here we go. Um, you know, they, they sold it for 40, but I would have probably, oh, yeah. I would think that you could, you could get more for that. You know, that's something that's just awesome. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. When I was looking at the comps, the items that seem to do the best are, um, the actual jerseys jackets like this one. Mm -hmm. And, um, some of the hats can be pretty some good. Of that, right, some of the hats. It kind of yeah. depends on the size of the following of the team. So if you find mm -hmm. some teams that are just, you know, more popular even outside their region, I think they're going to do better than a team that's more of a local following because then you just have fewer people who are searching for it. And mm -hmm. the people, I think the fans who are most likely to go on and buy apparel online are outside of the region that the team's yeah. located because it's not in local stores. So see now here's a Kobe Bryant jersey. So that yeah. went for 110. But you know, some of it it's 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 the kind of um I think it's kind of like a good bread and buttery kind of brand that should it 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 always it's it's a good solid seller and yeah it does it depends on the team and all but it's it's a lot of people look for the brand because of the quality. Right. And then if you do find like a really special jersey like a Kobe Bryant jersey, then you know it's definitely going to do well you can list different yeah and i i think it's um, cool so that, that, uh, oh i just wanted to mention that um mitchell and ness actually they they're known for their like vintage throwback jerseys but they actually started making jerseys mm -hmm. in 1933 so they're the company that made the same designs that they're like reproducing now because they've just been around for so long Wow, that's cool. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. And they do, um, th that would be in the outdoor adventure party. That would probably be, and right, would that be? Yes, that is an outdoor adventure brand. And so the other brands that are in that are more um, like actually being outdoors kind of brands. So like uh, Patagonia, uh, Canada Goose. Yeah. Um, but this is considered an outdoor adventure brand. Yeah. And then and our next one, the next one is uh Red Wing Shoes, which just like um Mitchell and Ness is a fairly old storied company that has been able to kind of move with the times and they started making work boots and the original boots are still very popular, but they now also have more like trending styles. Um they are one of those companies that has a really good like lifetime return policy. They're known for being an investment. They're going to last forever. So the good thing for resellers is that if you find them, 
they are really well made. So there's a better chance that they're still in pretty good shape and that they're going to keep lasting. And also if you um, are a buyer and you're looking for them secondhand, you can be more confident that you're buying something that's still going to hold up even though you're not the first owner, just because they do you know, last forever. So I think there's a certain, certain amount of confidence in the brands that helps um, as resellers, that helps buyers like be willing to pay up a little bit more for them. Um, yeah, for definitely. sure. I've seen you know quite a bit of uh, range in terms of the comps, um, but the boots regularly go for over a hundred, one hundred and fifty dollars, um, twenty to thirty for some of the other more like fashionable, less utilitarian styles. Um, but even then, if I found them in a the thrift store for you know a few bucks, that's still a nice profit. So yeah, like look for, look at these. These are um, these are pre-owned. Mm -hmm. They have a kind of bad picture with their hand in there and all, and they still sold for $150. So mm -hmm. yeah. So I would definitely look for that. And you can see the look of them. They're kind of classic uh, mm -hmm. utilitarian kind of looking mostly boots and some shoes and yeah. So yeah, this is definitely, I think sort of definitely a look for that brand. brand. I would love to find a pair of the boots in my size. Like that's on my list. I would like, if they were my size, I would keep them. Oh yeah. You. Yes. And I guess that would be in a, in a trending party a trending, yeah, like a trending that brand. Is trending. Um, so it's also, um, so Telfar is also a trending brand. So they overlap there. Um, mm -hmm. And the trending party definitely um is a good party to look at the whole brand list because they are quite diverse and they're just literally the brands that Poshmark is identified as being mm -hmm. really popular right now so it, they're everything from like um Abercrombie and Fitch um one teaspoon which is like a a jeans brand that does sort of distressed jeans Carhartt Fashion Nova so I mean just the, like Carhartt to Fashion Nova totally different um, but both, you know, quite trendy. Oh, yeah. So you get the idea of, of how diverse that group mm -hmm. is. Um, yeah. So Wilfred is also a trending brand. It's also listed under designer. Um, more like staple kind of um, you, wardrobe essentials. Yeah, it's very like minimalist, um, kind yeah. of like it girl of uh, office yeah, yeah. wear, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more casual, but you could definitely like, you know, wear a lot of these tops with a pencil skirt to the office. Um, but it actually is sort of aimed at a little bit of a younger demographic. Um, I've noticed that it runs a bit small. I've been disappointed before when I find something from this brand in the thrift store, I think is my size and then it does not fit. Um, but um, so this is listed in designer, which is a notch below luxury. So luxury is like, the you know high end runway designers and then designer is more like um, Coach, Longchamp, Theory, Tory Burch, um, so that kind of tier of of expensive brands, but not um, you know not necessarily like the high end runway ones. And it um, seems like the the prices um, pretty much for the solds, the comps range from you know it's not it's not going to bring you a huge amount of money, but it's a good kind of bread and butter brand again which you know it looks like a lot of the comps are between 25 and 50 or so 20 and 50. yeah so, so uh i should note that wilfred is a house brand of aritzia which is a um it's a store of compared to anthropology and the way it has a lot of different house brands that are within the same umbrella so uh, the other brands in um, aritzia are babaton tna wilfred free um some of them are a little bit more casual they're not all as like polished um mm -hmm. so i think the casual clothes from maritzia have lower comps um wilfred seems to have a little bit higher um but any of those i would probably pick up um yeah if it was in condition. for our canadian friends it, it yes so yes. sandy thank you i was just I was just saying that I was just going to say it's a Canadian company and I just saw Sandy's comment here. Yeah. So it's sold in Canada. So you often mm -hmm. see Wilfred Aritzia in the title. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So for our Canadian friends, you probably are familiar with Aritzia more so than 
uh, our friends in, in the US. US. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do have a couple stores in the US, but I think they're more like there's one in in New York City. Um, I think in LA, like not not nearly as common. I think is mm -hmm. my impression. Um, but Sandy, I mean, if you know more about how, yeah, very popular here. Okay. Okay, an excellent coffee. Yeah, and it's really and it's not a very. I mean, it's not compared to some of the uh, other high. It's good to hear something that's excellent quality mm -hmm. in that price tier. You know, especially I know that's the resale prices, but I think it's you know reasonably priced. You know, even even uh, new, yeah. but but the highest sold I used that are the leather jackets and wool coats, which can be upwards of like three hundred dollars. Yeah, so they um make the very popular like big kind of teddy bear coats that were big, more like last winter. Um, and then some of the more traditional, um, just like long, you know, wool coats, um, very polished. And yeah. those yeah. second hand yeah. are, yeah, oh, puffer jackets, yeah. All, so all of the outerwear, uh, very high comps for those. Yeah, I don't see any, I see a blazer for 150 here. Did you search, uh, uh, could you search like high to low? I think that's how yeah. I found it. Let's see what comes up. Okay, there you go, the leather yeah. jacket. Yep, right right there, the coats. Yep, so there is an example. I'll pull up the leather jacket. This one is $400 it sold for. So yeah, there you go. And the um the coat these these look like uh yeah like wool mm -hmm. lamel coats are They're mohair ones maybe yep, 250 yeah. so yeah there you go so yeah so those that's what that's like the holy grail of the brand i guess you know and it's and, you know probably not common to find these uh coats in thrift stores but not impossible it's definitely like worth the puff out. jackets are also popular in the brand they must good. be good if you wear them in Canada. That's a good endorsement. That's true. Okay, it's a Canadian, yes, because um, it is usually usually colder. And our next brand is Spell and the Gypsy Collective. So you might have heard of this brand. It is kind of mm -hmm. like um, um, Faithful. What's that? Yeah, Faithful, the brand. Yeah, it's it's kind of along that, that line where it's very boho, bohemian, very, but it, it does um, seem to hold its value a little better. Um, and like, here's a kimono robe that sold for $360. That's really pretty. Wow. Oh, that is yeah. Really yeah. Doesn't say that it was new with tags. Oh, it is new with tags. Okay. Yeah. So, but still, if that's what, new yeah, but tags those, is, it looks like the kimono tags, robe. Oh, yeah. it's still going to be decent. Yep. Here's a dress that was pre-owned and this is an extra small and it sold for $85. So you can see like that, that kind of, again, like it's got that vintage kind of boho feel, bohemian feel. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Just click. Um, so they are, so the other brands, so this is trending or boho. I've seen it in both parties and other brands are, you know, like free people, Zara, um, and also, um, um, faithful, the brand would be another one, you know, that's, and it, it, it was started. So it was, it's vintage inspired bohemian, like I said, florals, flowy dresses, things like that. And it was started by two Australian sisters. And they also did a collaboration with free people. And here's that collaboration. Cool. So, yeah. So also look for the free people uh, spell collab items because those also do very well on Poshmark and you have, um, you know, buyers that are dedicated to both brands then, you know, for, yeah, the, for the, 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 the double whammy of two different. Yeah. So this is from the free people website and you can see the original prices there are, um, it looks like these are, it looks like uh, some of these are on sale, but you know, this, like this dress is 269 originally. So, you know, and they, and again, it's, it's going to hold its value and then you'll have the double branding. So also look for the spell uh, and, um, free people collaborations. And then the next brand is, it's called Ace and Jig. And Another kind of boho feeling brand, but mm -hmm. yeah. not in the boho category. No, surprisingly, and I thought it would have been boho, but it's actually luxury. So another other brands in this list are 
um, like like Dior and Gucci and Dolce and Gabbana, Acne, Common Projects, Ralph Lauren, Black and Purple labels. So they are hand woven, eco friendly pieces made in India. And the quote from the website is effortless, effortless clothing made from our own custom women's textiles designed by us and made thoughtfully by artisan weavers in India. So, yeah, so it's kind of it definitely has that boho feeling, but they are expensive. They do hold their resale value pretty well. Um, you can see like here's a top that sold for 75 and that was pre-owned. And you can see that kind of, um, you know, boho feel. There's the label for it. And yeah, so it's like a lot of the, the textured cotton and woven fabrics, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, um, they, they have a very ethnic feel there's a jumpsuit and you can see again, it's like that woven textured cotton and a lot of natural, you know, natural fibers. And so that's Ace and Jake. So look for that brand for can sure. You imagine If you found this at the Goodwill outlet and you're paying by the pound, cause they're just like very flowy, lightweight fabrics. I know that's crazy. And, yeah. it, and it can happen, you know, here's, here's oh, a yeah. dress that, that sold for 160. And that does not say it was new with tag. So yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah. So they use the stock photo and then there's an example of how your photos can be. Cause look at the color difference. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That's a really good point. And the dress, I can't even. Not. Anyway, you can see um, that you know, they did. Yeah. Yeah. Pay attention. Cause I think that dress is more of a red color and it's showing more Brown, but Anyway, definitely look for that brand because that is one that can really, um, it, it seems to really hold its resale value very well. The next brand is TNA. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You know what? Um, which, because uh, we combined no, that. Yeah, I switched that out. It's actually, um, let me, uh, hold on a second. Let me edit that. Um, it's actually called, it's the brand that I'm going to ne do next is actually, um, Anin, Anin Bing. Of Anin Bing. Sorry, I had forgotten to change the banner. There we go. So... Um, and this brand is kind of, it's, it's one that I was, was not on my radar before. Was it on your radar? Have you it heard of not, it? No. Okay. So it is a luxury brand and other brands again in this, in this part, in these parties are like Alexander McQueen, Tom Ford Prada, Givenchy, Henri Bindel, um, Hermes, you know, all those Dolce and Gabbana, all those high, high end brands that you mm -hmm. can think of are in that category and they are basically wardrobe essentials for a timeless look high-end staple wardrobe pieces and it's the kind of purchase that will be ward a wardrobe station staple and last a long time and be very versatile like you can pair it with a lot of different things so you can see this is their website you can see a lot of um you know kind of classic neutral colors and you know staple wardrobe pieces and you know they range and well here's this jacket is is a uh, Eleven ninety nine, um, two ninety nine for the sweater. So they, you know, they're up there in the price. They have accessories, and I did notice that a lot of their um, sweatshirts and their sport items. It's funny because I was re I was researching this brand, and then on my Facebook feed, of course, uh, ads for Anine Bing started coming up, mm -hmm. and I did see a lot of these sweatshirts that have Anine Bing sport, you know, were on them. And I think that's kind of like their athlete athleisure wear line has. And there's that, that's what the logo looks like. So if you look on Poshmark, you can see that the solds are, this is high to low. So the jackets are like, you know, 675, 650 for these leather jackets, which is crazy. So again, the coats, the camel coats, five, 65 and then the boots seem to be the next best selling thing they have a lot of like kind of moto style boots and um you know boots with a lot of like studs and things like that on them uh these are not loading but um and a lot of the basic wardrobe essential pieces as well so 
there's a pair of there, that's a boot oh, that that okay. sold for 550 so yeah so you can see like the studded kind of look and that's kind of the hallmark of the brand and uh my internet is not there it goes okay yeah that boot is a very popular boot apparently but uh, like and you can see like the buckles. yeah so you can just see some of the items that you know the jackets and the boots seem to be the most popular and then the bags the purses um the, this flannel jacket sells for 450. so you know just definitely look out for the brand and you never know what you're gonna find so um yeah so that's that brand and again that is a luxury brand and the next brand is Mink Pink. So this is not a luxury brand, but it is a, um, here's Mink Pink. Okay. Trending so, brand. It's a trending brand. Yes. Thank you. So, and I have, I actually have a dress that, you know, before I knew the brand, I actually, a long time ago, I think I must've picked it up in the bins or something. Mm -hmm. I have a dress and it's somewhere in my inventory stash. I need to grab that and list it. It's just, a, it's a black dress. It's got like some textured, um, it's like a vel velour and it's got some tex a textured print on it, but I need to get that out and list that because I didn't realize that it was a trending brand. So you can see that the resale value isn't, you know, it's not huge, but you know, $40. I mean, somebody I think undersold those shorts a little for $6, but uh, $20, $40. So you know, it's kind of, again, like a bread and butter range kind of uh, brand, but you can see some of the, and it's more trendier kind of, um, you know, stylish kind of pieces you can see there. Yeah, and this is the kind of brand where if you find it for a good price, it can be in your closet just to bring in traffic through a posh party because you know you can share it to the trending posh party. Yeah, I think it's closer to like a fast fashion brand, mm -hmm. you know, like like that in that category. But yeah, it's definitely a brand to look for and to stock your closet with. So, and um, yeah, and other brands in that range are BB Dakota, Boohoo, Rampage, Urban Outfitters. They do, uh, it's it's only women's wear. They have, and it's defined, this is from their website again, quirky, defined by a quirky, cool aesthetic that is playfully eclectic and feminine and tinged with a hit of hint of vintage charm. And it's only women's wear. They do also swimwear, sunglasses, dresses, and uh, they do a lot of, you know, bright colors and prints too, so. And then the last one is actually, it's called Draper James. And Draper James is, you will all know who is behind the label. It is Reese Witherspoon's um, company. So I did not know she had a company until we started working on this episode. Yeah, well, I did know this from a while back. So when we were thrifting a while back, I found a skirt that was J Draper jeans. Oh. And I, up, I think I picked it up for like a couple dollars. It was this cute little flowy skirt, a uh, mm. floral skirt. And that darn skirt sold so quickly. And I think I sold it for like 70 bucks or something like wow. immediately. And I was like, so then I did a little more research into the brand. And that's when I found that it was Reese, Reese Witherspoon's brand and that it had a huge following. And I, I sold that skirt on eBay a while back. The brand does, it's kind of got that, you know, Southern plantation kind of, you know, whatever. Yeah, so definitely like a Southern charm, I guess he would want to say. Mm -hmm. And it's... So um, it, it it was start, it was launched by Reese Witherspoon. It was founded in 2015. So it's an it's a relatively newer brand, and it's a nod to Witherspoon's Southern upbringing. And the line aims to emphasize her Southern roots and personal style. So the name is actually in honor of Reese Witherspoon's grandparents. Dorothea Draper was her grandmother, and William James Witherspoon was her grandfather. So oh, cool. that's. Yeah, so it's a family name. That's where the name came from. And it's, um, so it, it would be considered a party kind of look. And, and other 
other brands in that category would be in that party would be Ralph Lauren, Kate Spade, Madewell, Lily Pulitzer. Mm -hmm. So you can see like kind of gingham and, um, you know, stripes, florals, floral prints. So yeah. So yeah, lots of fun prints. Draper James. That's a good one to know. Yeah. <clears throat> And did you Definitely. mention that that's part of the, um, the preppy party? I'm not sure if you mentioned that. Yes, I did just mention that. Oh, you did? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Don't blame. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. just belatedly, um, I know a couple people jumped in late in the chat and um, are saying hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's great to see you all. Um, hope if you came a little bit after we started that you watch the replay because there's definitely a ton of good info um, mm -hmm. and lots to learn um, for Poshmark. Uh, there's Craig. And thank you. I wanted to give a shout out to Craig, too, because um, he reached out last night and said, hey, post about your show in my group. So I wanted to give a shout out to Craig and his husband, Rick, have a, a Canadian seller group called Craft. And um you should join it too lola by the way it's oh i mean it's, it's for canadian resellers but there's a lot of really good information that also pertains to u.s sellers so um and uh so he just said hey post about your show and so I, hopefully we have some more canadian viewers from from my post in craft so thank you to craig and rick for that cool. and and uh, yeah sandy is that how you uh is that how you found out about the show? I have a feeling that Sandy might have found that out. That makes sense. So we've got some Canadian um, yes. experts here. We, awesome. <laughs> we love our Canadian viewers. So, and okay. Oh. So, yeah, Canadian resellers and fantastic thrifters on Facebook. That's what it stands for. And they're 80% Canadian and 20% US. And I am now a proud member and, um, I will be uh, participating in, in that group too. So, um, okay. Oh, oh, okay. So she subscribes. Uh, so Sandy knows us from, okay. Okay. And, um, okay. I have been dreaming about driving up to Quebec as soon as it is safe to do so. So if I get to do that anytime soon, I will have to uh, scope out some thrifting to do on the way up. Um, and just drive drive straight north through Vermont um, up to Canada. So I bet there's some good thrifting to do. Right I would now. love to do that post pandemic. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to visit our friend Christine. She came oh, down to Philly to visit, and I have not been to Canada. Visit. I promised her I'd come visit sometime. So yeah, well, someday Lola, maybe we can road trip it. Too. Yes, I would love to go. I have never been to Buffalo. It is definitely on my list. It's a little further for me because I'd have to go like west, but. Yeah, um, I haven't ever been to been Niagara Falls. Yeah, so I was there when I was a little girl, but um, I haven't been to Canada since then. So, yes, and uh, we do have some new, just a short news segment. What's the matter, Declan? Oh, he didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> My son is here. Okay, so we have just a short news segment, and really nothing too much but we speaking of Poshmark I did notice that they just added you can have it sorry my son is here um they just added a um another if you do if you make an offer you have to give a shipping discount in Poshmark but it used to be that you only could do uh, $4.99 or free shipping, which means that you give a $2.12 discount or a $7.11. But now they have a third offer, which I love. And it's a little bit of a less one. And you can give them $5.95 shipping. So if you want to just give a little discount um, on some of those. Okay, Declan, just we're not doing it. So if you want to give a lesser discount... Um, you know, it's, it's good for some of those less expensive items that you have, you know, if you don't want to like, let's say you're just trying to clear out an item for $10 or whatever, and you don't, you don't want to give free shipping, you don't want to give 499 shipping, but you can still give a now you can give a smaller discount. So that's what it's good for is like those less expensive items. If I'm going to sell like 
this bag, for example, this Longchamp bag, if I'm going to give them, you know, it's a $234 bag, I would probably do the offer the free shipping on that. But for something that's like $10, like that can really eat into your profit. So because Poshmark does take 20%. So I like, I like it that there's a third tier now. Yeah, what do you think? That is really good to know because it, there are some items where at a certain point you've dropped the price, you can't really do another offer with the ship. The shipping discount just makes it almost impossible. So that is. Uh, uh, so Sandy says that Poshmark shipping is $12.99 or $9.99. In wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know shipping is more expensive in Canada. It's crazy. So it seems it's still cheaper, but not by a ton when you factor in the exchange rate, right? Well, I don't remember what it is now. Yeah, I don't know what the exchange rate. I know it's still it's still more. Yeah, it's still less expensive here. Yeah. But um, yeah, I know that that is true. So yeah, and they get to sell into the. Yeah, I wish. I really wish that uh, you're right, Craig. I wish mm -hmm. that. What I wish that with the international now there's Poshmark Canada and Poshmark US. I wish that you could sell to Poshmark Canada in the US and vice versa. But what you have to do instead is send it to a freight a shipping forwarder, which most people don't want to be bothered with. So Posh, so Canada is to Canada and US is to US right now. I wish that they would change that. Hopefully in the future they will. But, um, you know, yeah, that's true. The, the mm -hmm. US postal system has does have its issues right now. That is true. So. 30%. Okay. 30% for exchange rate. So, and I do have a couple of solds um, on, my, on our marketing report. I actually just today, so I had a, Oh, that's sorry to interrupt. That's okay. great. So they are working on it. That will be Whoa. awesome, especially for you guys, but for us too, because you know, just be nice to buy from Canadian sellers, be nice to sell to Canadian customers. Absolutely. So yeah. yeah happens fast. That'll be That's great. good to know, Craig. So thank you for that. Um, I actually did have my first on eBay, my first in a while, just this, just today, I'm not showing these sales, but I just had, I had a buyer. I've been at my mom's all week and I had, she's, she bought something that um, I have to dig out and I'm shipping like a couple days late, which I don't usually do because I said to her, I have to dig it out. And I've been spending the whole week at my mom's and I probably can't get it out until I'll probably get it out later today. But, and she was like, Oh, I feel so. And I told her like my dad's in the hospital with COVID and you know, that's why things are just a little crazy right now. And she, instead of like, you know, most buyers, you know, most buyers are understanding, but not only was she understanding, she was like, Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. Let me buy some more items from you. I have, I see some other items that I like in your store. So she went and bought like five more items for me, five more clothing items. So I was just, it was just so nice. And yes, it's fine. So she said, you know, you can ship them all together with, with the dress. So I actually had to ship them in two packages because eBay metrics because, but I'm go, I just gave her, I just gave her discounted shipping on everything. And it was so exciting to have buyer buy so many items from me. So not only was she okay with, with me shipping a little late, she was like, Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for you and your family. Um, I see some other things. Let me just cheer you up during this difficult time and buy some more. So it was like, wow. So I had, yeah. So I had a really good experience with a buyer this morning. Love it when things like that happen. But my sales, these were from last week. I was going to show them when we didn't have our oh, show. Oh, you showed this one to me. This is incredible. Yeah. So this actually sold, I actually sold it for 80. I took a best offer of 80. This is, I didn't sell it for 125. I sold it for 80. But I did sell it to a buyer in Canada, speaking of Canada. Oh. And it is, um, the the brand is my, I actually, there's an error in my title. It's my kind of gal, not girl. The, there's the, and it's, it's from the seventies, this label, and it is kind of like a lounge ca captain. Um, I use the keyword laugh in seventies. It's got like that glitz and glamor kind of uh, free and it's, it's a one size fits all. It's a free size, had these beautiful sequins on it. So I purchased this from, I talked about thrift to you before mm -hmm. we, um, they're really nice. They have great customer service. I, I, I love them and, um, I got, so everything's a dollar you do, you pay shipping and the shipping it's, it's, um, it goes by a point system. So the more items you have, the higher the shipping is going to be obviously, but I had purchased some other items. And so this was a dollar and I sold it for 80 and it sold pretty fast. And again, it went to a buyer in Canada. So 
that was a nice sale. And she, I gave her the $80. I took her $80 offer because shipping to Canada, you know, so. Oh, for fancy Zoom, there you go, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what she needed that dress for, but she needed it, so I was. I mean, who doesn't need a sequin captain? That's. That is true, yes, it is. So this was another one that I had, I picked up at, I sold it for $49.99. It was new with tags. I picked it up a while ago at a thrift store. It just took me a while to finally get it listed. And I think I paid like $4.99 for it originally. But I knew that um, because it was the ACM so soccer, um, I knew that somebody would want that whenever I see like a specific, um, you know, co-branded like Nike or Adidas sports item that's especially with soccer. Um, there are, and I think this did, uh, did it go? I think it did go international. Um, I forget where it went though. Um, it did go international though. Um, that seems like the kind of item where you definitely want to have international. Yeah, like, I think it went to the. U I want to say the UK. I can't. Mm -hmm. And then this was just a, a loft sweater. So this was a good sale, just because. I mean, it sold for seventeen dollars. It was just a loft sweater. Love it when Poshmark sales like that happen. You know, when it's just like a basic bread and butter item, and you get a pretty mm -hmm. decent. And then this I wanted to show because. It was a Depop sale, but it was my first, um, let's zoom out on that. It was my first um, international sale, sale on Depop. Oh, cool. So it was a vintage Walt Disney ashtray and it sold for, it only sold for $12, but it went to Ireland. So that was, that was pretty exciting. And he spent, you know, it was like 18 bucks to ship to Ireland. So. Wow. So pretty more than the cost of the actual item yes yes that's an example and he, but he wanted it he had to have it and i uh, he was really really nice um you know he left me good feedback and it got there really quickly i was surprised it took less than a week to get there so oh. yeah so that was um my first depop international sell and then we do have a question for you for this week um we want to know what brands are successful for you on poshmark so let us know in the youtube comments and I never thought it. Yeah. So, so you had that ashtray. You should list it on, on uh, Depop then Craig, for sure. So here's the thing with Depop. It is mostly clothing and items like that. However, some of the kind of kitschy vintage items have that kind of, that it's the right audience for them and they will sell. So if you have like some kind of like a vintage um, mug or, you know, like that <laughs> ashtray or, oh, it's <laughs> So don't list it then. <laughs> okay. Well then don't. <laughs> Uh, but if you have items like that, even Lola, you pointed out some of the vintage cameras go yeah, to the I a couple of cameras and they had, I think some of them, the highest level of interest of any of the items I've listed that they just got tons of likes and, um, drew people into my store. So I, I definitely still, when I'm thinking about what to list there, my first thought is clothing, but it's a good marketplace for all kinds of that, like vintage and, and vintage for depop also means like the 90s so exactly and early 2000s y2k mm -hmm. is, is a big trending keyword on depop so yeah so yeah so so uh, it is mostly fashion and you know things like but you have to remember that you mm -hmm. can sell other items on there and those items i i always add into my depop shop and you know they will sell so Oh, okay. So, uh, going back to our brands, Levi's. Yeah. Yeah. One teaspoon. That's And that's a newer brand for me. So, I mean, I've heard of it, but it's... I have one pair of one teaspoon jeans that I found so far, and I was so excited to find them. Oh, you've sold... Wow. T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. shower curtains there. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. I could totally see that. So, yeah, those are the kind of items that you want to definitely look for. And you can find us. We're everywhere. Um, Lola, you're mostly. I'm um, Run Lola Run on Poshmark and Depop and Lo-Fi with two dashes on eBay. And, and I'm thrifting a on most platforms except for eBay where I am Colbray asterisk dazzle. Um, long story. That's an old name. When I had just Colin and Brendan, my two 
older son. So it was named after them, but I just never changed the name. So, and then you can find us at, um, you can email us nalothrifts at gmail.com. If you have an idea for an upcoming video or you want to be a future guest, or you can always comment on our videos themselves in YouTube and, um, let us know if you have any other comments and questions. And once again, um, next week we will be back and again ignore the date on there because i never changed it <laughs> but next week we will uh, again if, if everything is okay with my dad you know that's just kind of like a things can always go crazy at the last minute so um if, if everything is is still you know the same with my dad we will be doing our show next week and 2 p.m eastern 11 a.m pacific talking about our duds and if you have any again if you have anything any duds that you want to share any information about some of your duds or anything you know let us know and uh, thank you so much for everyone who tuned in and uh, have a great week, everyone. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.